Professor Pagulatos has the floor. Thank you very much. I, I rose because after lunchtime I do not trust myself uh, sitting there. So limelight is quite low. And um, Ambassador Rees talked about the security challenges, so let me focus uh, my attention especially on the Eurozone and then try to open up the discussion. And this is partly um, because I'm also a Eurozone scholar and of course being a Eurozone scholar and Greek at the same time is a bit like um, observing the circus from inside the monkey's cage, if I can uh, draw a parallel, which comes on top of being Greek over the last five years, uh, which is a, a full-time job in itself. But um, let me um, let me ask uh, begin by starting the question: Is the crisis in the eurozone over? Um, and in certain ways, it is, um, in the sense that the eurozone is still with us, with all its members. Um, the worst is behind us if we compare it to where we were back in 2010, where serious investors were, were betting their money that the euro would break up. It hasn't broken up. There is also some recovery, which cannot be ignored. After a double dip recession, uh, Eurozone grew last year and is also growing this year, though the prospects are uh, seem to be um, uh, weakening in terms of the, of the, of the growth uh, um, dynamic. The MOUs have ended. The bailout programs have been completed uh, in every country except for Greece. All the countries that were under conditionality programs uh, have been able to access the markets, again with a sad exception of Greece. Uh, this is not the Eurozone to blame, by the way. Uh, I would cast the greatest responsibility upon us, but I'll come back to that later. Um, and quite importantly, there's been an important, a quite impressive policy and institutional output over the last few years uh, in response to the crisis. Institutions have been set up, new treaties have been devised, the SM, the FSF, uh, new legislation, the ECB has engaged in quite unprecedented activity. However, um, I uh, stand by the view that the crisis is not over. It is not over because, uh, first of all, the, the Eurozone is lagging behind the U.S. economy or the rest of the European Union in terms of growth. It is not over because of the debt overhang, both public and private debt. It is not over because the Eurozone does not have the, the mechanisms that will allow it to persevere another crisis of such magnitude. Uh, and I'll come back to that again later as well. It is not over because we have witnessed and we're also seeing um, the effects of financial fragmentation or what has been called in the previous panel the bank sovereign doom loop through which banking sectors with their sovereigns are entangled in vicious toxic cycles that are self-enforcing. The Eurozone hasn't been able to break these cycles uh, effectively so far, though clearly the banking union is on that direction. And most importantly from this part of the Eurozone, I would say that it's not over because of the lasting legacy of unemployment, long-term unemployment, um, and uh, and, and, and the collapse of the employment rate. Back in 2010, the, the European Union set um, in its growth agenda an employment target, employment rate target of 75%. Uh, the employment rate now in Greece is already slightly below 50%. Uh, this is a terrible development, especially if combined with the disinvestment that has occurred, uh, and it occurs very negatively with regard to the growth potential of uh, the Greek economy and also the economies um, in the Eurozone periphery. Now, um, one reason why this legacy is still with us is that the crisis was perceived in a fragmented manner. Um, and the, the crisis management mainly relied on national responses, and certainly national responses were warranted uh, and should have taken the brunt of adjustment, uh, and they rightfully did so. Um, and again, we are speaking from the country that in a Eurozone crisis, which was quite unorthodox in the sense that it did not uh, originate at a Eurozone scale from the fiscal sector, but rather from what has been described as a sudden stop, it had to do with uh, channels of financial um, over uh, borrowing, uh, private sector indebtedness, uh, capital inflows, and that is why in the league of the, of the countries that were hit by the crisis, we have Ireland and Spain, which had paradigmatic fiscal performance up to the crisis. Uh, but Greece managed to fail um, 
in a very in a very orthodox and very predictable manner uh, by being the one to end up in this crisis as a result of its fiscal failure combined with its failure in competitiveness. So yes, the the national adjustment paths relied on. Uh, fiscal adjustment and competitiveness recovery at the national level. However, what was necessary there was a Eurozone policy response that would be able to provide the stimulus so as to offset the recessionary implications, the recessionary results of this adjustment, which was a combined fiscal consolidation, uh, income reduction, um, wage reduction, and uh, overall... Um, um, uh, uh, competitive disinflation or uh, deflationary adjustment, which had to be offset through some channel, and this channel was not there. There was no Eurozone level uh, stimulus, counter-cyclical response by way of an investment stimulus or by way of, uh, for example, uh, a European unemployment insurance scheme, and these proposals are both part of the five presidents' report uh, for how to fix the Eurozone. Um, so, the, the Eurozone crisis is still with us, it is still lingering, and I would say that the focal point, and for many people the focal point of the Eurozone crisis is not even Greece, it is Italy, because it is much larger than Greece, because uh, it has been stagnating for the last 15 years, and because um, it is already having a majority in its political system that are uh, growingly anti-Euro. Anti so the crisis is not with us, and it requires a sort of grand bargain to which I will um, return. But the Eurozone crisis itself is a part of uh, Europe's poly crisis, and some aspects of that have been touched upon by Ambassador Rees. A multiple crisis, multiple dividing lines from the Eurozone crisis to migration, to relations with Russia, to Brexit, uh, to, to Brexit and the tendency to repatriate competences. Um, all this suggests a very vicious dynamics of disintegration lurking over uh, Europe. And of course, governments have been keen to react to this crisis by claiming uh, national sovereignty. Um, and we've seen uh, referenda uh, in a very foolish way in the case of Greece, in a very dangerous way in the case of uh, um, the Putinesque government of, uh, of Hungary. And um, uh, now this, and I, I would like to um, point out, many crises have led to leaps of integration. Uh, this time may be different, might be different, uh, for four reasons. First, um, th we have issues that are reaching the core of sovereignty, borders, transfers, fiscal and social policy. Second, um, we have highly divergent preferences, especially between the Franco-German axis, which is not operating. Uh, the French side is on sleep mode, apparently. And third, EU public goods uh, to be reaped are not that evident. And fourth, if I may say so, there is a, a, a generational replacement that the generations that have witnessed the benefits and have experienced what Europe is like uh, are not with us anymore. Uh, that we have a new generation, new generations coming in who take Europe as granted and cannot realize the consequences of what it means to miss it, what it means not to have it. So let me conclude by, by saying the only way that I envisage forward is to be able to use this crisis uh, as the opportunity for a grand bargain, a grand bargain, a new package deal such as the one that we had in the 80s that combined the single market with structural funds and generated a win-win for all the parties in the European Union. Uh, such grand bargain is possible. It would contain uh, parts of the Eurozone reform um, uh, report of the five presidents for the Eurozone, which has been put on hold until the French and German elections of 2017, and it would inevitably have to expand in scope in order to be able to involve other issues as well. And by um, uh, in integrating such large issue space in such grand bargain, we would be able to, um, uh, uh, to uh, use this multi-crisis as an opportunity uh, for moving forward and avoiding uh, a fatal and disastrous breakup. Thank you very much.